Hey Metalheads, welcome to a band review, something we haven't done in a while. Who is featured? We're gonna have the Eternal Champion. I love the name, Eternal <laughs> Champion. So, where are they from? What kind of music do they play? So, very cool. This is a, uh, a sort of underground band. You won't find much of uh, their stuff on Spotify. If you type in Eternal Champion on Wikipedia, you will get a, a book series by uh, the British author Michael Moorcock. And this is a book series about an eternal champion who travels throughout the multiverse and, I don't know, does heroic quests. I haven't read it myself. I love uh, this idea of multiverse. I'm not going to say too much about it, but I, I can imagine the, the adventures. And we'll, we'll see a little bit of that on the, uh, the cover art. So this is a, uh, a really cool project that is, uh, it solves the riddle of steel, which uh, is where are the American metal bands. Previously, a question we often ask. Thought they were stuck in the 80s, but there is, this band in particular is, I think, leading the charge of this new wave of American heavy metal. And what's cool about this band is they are very actively trying to carry the torch of the epic heavy metal American tradition into the modern day. So the band itself is split. The vocalist is a blacksmith uh, cool. in Texas. And uh, the guys doing the instrumentals for the most part are in Philadelphia. And they work with other projects. So they send the, uh, the instrumentals down to Texas. And then uh, the lead singer's name is Jason Tarpey. He sings and then they put them together. And when they happen to be in the same place at the same time, they perform live. And these shows are just, they look so amazing. and. I pulled a bunch of live footage from the band and put the, the studio tracks on top and, and we'll see that. So I'm just going to say that you've been there, but you haven't seen them no, yet. No, I want to go to one of these concerts so bad. So this is modern American heavy metal, very much in the style of Manila Road. That's one of the band's major influences. More on that after uh, the, first the first song, song, which is the lead track off their first uh, full-length album, The Armor of Ire from 2016. It is an anthem called I Am The Hammer. Yeah. We'll see. The thing to pay attention to is, and I think this is what they end their concerts mm -hmm. with, is uh, to see the eternal champion, mm -hmm. uh, Jason Tarpey. Uh, really, you see how close he gets to the crowd. I don't think they use the click tracks and all. Like, they're just playing metal. It's awesome. Let's see and hear it. I must say, before we continue, a good dose of doom. Uh -huh. And I bring that up because you'll see the guitarist. He's got a candle mask t-shirt. One of my favorites. <laughs> we talked about it on the channel. Yeah.
not what I expected somehow. Mm. In the sense that it was much more doomy than Manila Rudy. Yes. To me, at least this is the first the first taste of it. And so what I would say is that uh, this is not a good band for a first listen. You have to get into it and you really come to love the sound, which I would say is is probably at least what they are trying to do is a would be a, a great compliment because that's very much how Manila Road is, yeah, right? Yeah. This vocalist might turn you off and the, No, the, I liked it. It's just I didn't expect it somehow. Mm. But stick with it if you listen to it. You just you come to love that that heavy sound. And uh, I know that um, the vocalist was inspired to get into epic heavy metal from uh, Manila Road, in particular mm-hmm. the Mystification album. So I think it's a very similar for me where first couple listens it doesn't quite click, but then you really start to like seek it out. It's a, it's a great sound. Yeah, I'm thinking about this candle mass. That it's definitely there and definitely the Black Sabbath, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, you can hear a little bit in the voice of the lead singer here, uh, the Aussie phrasing. Well, interesting. This guy uh, doesn't have any training and he's, he's had a couple other projects where he's singing harsh vocals and he's mm-hmm. even said like, I don't do the harsh vocals because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I may <laughs> blow out my voice. Uh-huh. Uh, and I actually hope that that he does start taking yeah. it seriously because um, we've seen how that can, can yeah, yeah. It, it can really mess people up. But uh, awesome. Um, yes, very, and, very nice. And what I love most about it is there's this one concert from uh, Century City in, in Philly where like it was the, one of the very small one. And you see like black dudes yeah. and the hipster with the mustache and the flat bill like everyone's just rocking out just chicks in the crowd very small venue but uh and the, he's right up there you know he, yeah. he points the mic out for this song like half the time and people knew people knew yeah. the lyrics yeah. totally i thought actually there was quite a big crowd comparing to the fact that there's not spotify there's not this not that, that big one was in greece uh-huh. I saw a Greek flag. Yeah, that, so that's where the, the big draw yeah. is. And, um, in Greece. Yeah, yeah. And I know they've had some, like a private show in Belgium where someone flew yeah. them out to their farm and they just, they, they said that was their, their favorite show in the, the interviews Fun. I watched. Fun, definitely very interesting. What are we going to listen to next? Next, we're going to hear a song off their second album, uh, Ravening Iron. Or Ravening Iron. I don't know how you put it. Uh, Probably not my favorite song, but one I could find footage for. It is okay. called uh, Skull Seeker. Skull Seeker goes into that tradition of painkiller, dream catcher, uh, etc. Shadow maker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, Skull Seeker. I, I, I like the uh, actually like from this album the 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 lead uh, the lead song, which is the title track, uh, Ravening Iron. But uh, they don't seem to be playing that live. So we'll hear uh, Skull Seeker. Skull Seeker sounds. I can and this is think. this is actually from uh, a recent show, which would be either early October 2021. Oh, this year! Yeah, they played. Nice. Uh, in, in, They're starting again in Philadelphia. Yeah, ah, so good to hear that. Let's go. 
<laughs> and that's the album cover. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Uh, oh, I like this. Uh, I'm very curious if that uh, that uh, slave at the bottom has arms or not. I never really was able to figure that out. No, she has a snake. No, at the bottom. Ah. Is it an armless sex slave? <laughs> God knows what it is. Uh, we should ask the band. Who knows? Uh, I like this very much. Mm -hmm. I did, particularly because obviously of the guitars yeah. in the in the last third. Let's say mm -hmm. that was perfect. I think uh, this one, yeah, again, not my favorite pick, but the next song will hear a lot more guitars. Um, it was a good composition overall, but I, I like that uh, there was a nice balance between the lyric uh, part and the guitar part, and good rhythm guitar mm -hmm. too. I think we'll, we'll, we'll get a bit more complexity in the mm. next uh, in the next song. But uh, before we go there, uh, I think what's um, uh, what's interesting about this band is if you just saw these videos, if you're just seeing the band for the first time, you would say, you would think like this guy like. Texas Rattlesnake, looks like Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> probably like meanest dude ever. So soft-spoken, so <laughs> nice in all the interviews I've watched. Um, which is totally different from this, and yeah. we'll see in the next, in the next the video, he's got a sword on stage. Like it's not <laughs> actually how, how the guy is, I think. But there's something about, for me, like um, this guy is a, you know, epic heavy too. metal fan who self-taught, like really, you know, it, but they have this 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 fan base, and uh, it'd be very interesting to see many what they people do with it. at concerts. I'm, I'm happy to see that, despite the promotion, like we talked about this uh, other bands, so like Judicator, we talked about mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. I think, and so on. Some other American bands as well that are not Visigoth, right? Yeah. Like, they don't have a lot of promotion. They are. Uh, fan driven, right? Fan supported, yeah. and it's fantastic that you can do that. That you can. Yeah. As a band, if you go, to do that. if you go on their website and try to get one of their EPs, or they, they even release like some cassette tapes. Of, ah, of, uh, again, I think things. it's funny. And uh, I mean, all sold out. Yeah, I mean, people are supporting them, and uh, but you're right, it's an interesting comparison with like Judicator, Visigoth, both mm -hmm. awesome bands, but they just yeah, they don't seem to to break out. And I don't think this band necessarily <laughs> wants like they are like they're they're true metal. Yeah. <laughs> as 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 far as it goes. Living it, um, breathing it. So um the last song I want to play is uh, probably my favorite off of Armor of Ire, uh, the first album. And that you is You only have two albums? Two albums. Okay. And a bunch of these like like EPs and yeah. and, and um yeah, these cassette tapes. <laughs> that, uh, which is all has uh, this sort of sword and sorcery uh, cover art, which is awesome. <laughs> but uh the, the song I want to play is called Sing a Last Song of Valdez. Um, I think the I Am the Hammer, which I played, is really catchy. Yeah. That gets you into it. But um, after listening to the album a bunch of times, and, and their, their albums are like, I think, 35 minutes. Uh -huh, out, so they're short, short, sweet. You may not like the sound, but I think it's, it's really well done. So let's hear uh, Sing a Last Song of, of Valdez. God knows what it's about. Valdez. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some okay. mythical, you whatever. know, world, whatever. Lyrics. But uh, and I think if I have this right, this this is all comes from uh, this one concert that is live at Resident. I, I, Wherever maybe, that maybe is. Maybe Philadelphia. I'm not sure. But uh, let's hear. Let's it's a bit hear. long. Six minutes.
So that's a little bit more of an album in the middle of the album song, right? Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. I don't know which one of the songs I preferred. It's um, different, different styles. Well, it's not a battle. <laughs> no, it's not a battle. No, I mean that mode, right? I really like it. I was just thinking uh, when I saw the sword. Imagine if he made it, you know, as a blacksmith. Yeah, he, he might have, but it's very much in the same uh, spirit like in, as yeah. the, the Conan the Barbarian sword. And fun fact, as, as, they're, <laughs> as they used to have this, you know, how bands have this pre- uh, the music before they get on yeah, stage. Yeah. It was the riddle of uh, the. Um, yeah, I think it's the riddle of steel. Uh, Basil Palador is from the Conan movie. Like <laughs> these guys are sword and sorcery to the max. Um, cool. I really liked it. Again, somehow when you when you introduce the band first, my expectations were a little bit more heavy metal than doom metal uh, in this balance. And mm. just listening first. First time, yeah, this is my first exposure. It seems much more doom metal-y than what I expected yeah. from the from the graphics. I was expecting something more flamboyant. This is more low-key 
in a sense. Yeah. And, and but I like it. Yeah. What I wanted to point out from the, the last song is that, um, and why the video is a bit mismatched, is uh, uh, there's this like narration part. Yeah. And they sing it live. And, and how many like bands, I'm thinking of like Glory Hammer or Twilight yeah. Force, they have a sorcerer in the yeah. band, but then they just play the track, right? The sorcerer yeah. isn't singing. This guy's singing the actual <laughs> narration, which is uh, kind of fun. Yeah. I did not understand everything that was said no. either. Just it's, FYI, uh, I don't know the story. Of, from, yeah, neither do I. But it's, it's <laughs> a lot of uh, like law versus chaos. Yeah, that's you what know, um, uh, mythology. I think one of the recordings was from Greece again because uh, it looked like Rockaway. Yeah, I think I think yeah. it is. I think they're popular there, and um, they pop up in in Philly every now and then. But uh, of all concerts, yeah. I would love to be there. I love that Doom, like especially the the one that was in black and white. Yeah. Like, people are rocking out, crowd surfing. <laughs> just <throwing laughs> it was so fun. And, oh my god, uh, I really like it. Very nice atmosphere, and um, yeah, definitely great band. Um, which says again that there's many, much, much more to find in the U.S. It's just like it's not always easy to detect. Yeah, right? exactly. Like if they're not here, not there, not promoted, not on concert, not on tour, like in a big festival uh, tournament and so on. But so there's more of these. Uh, yeah, cool. there's there's more of these. Um, you know, they have the uh, new wave of British heavy yeah. metal, NWHO beat, whatever. Yeah. Uh, now there's there. I think there's even a YouTube channel that's like new wave of epic heavy, heavy metal. Uh -huh. And so uh, this so one's just out there. Maybe, maybe there's going to be more public interest as well. And maybe. that would generate some commercial, you know. The one that uh, that I was listening to on the channel that I liked was uh, Enforcer, which is a Swedish yes, band. Yes, that they're, I like. They're, I, also, uh, they're also out there. So. I love them. I love them. Yeah. So Maybe that's another it. band review in the if future. You, if you didn't like them, uh, Eternal Champion, on the first listen, uh, I was there too. Just have yeah. it on in the background uh, for a couple uh, run-throughs to the album, and I think you'll find yourself coming back to it. Very nice. I really enjoyed it. Uh, and it's always cool to discover new bands, new, yeah. new names. It so. is. I'm glad uh, Epic Heavy Metal lives on today. Yeah. <laughs> Defend the owner of the United States exactly. in the world of metal. Exactly. Well, oh, there's lots of other metal as well, just to be fair to mm. the US. Uh, it's just like not the But I think them. these guys, as far as the um the, the scene is, and, and they're 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 champions of the uh, the Eternal. underground scene. <laughs> so uh, it'll be interesting to follow them. I hope that uh, Jason uh protects his voice and because uh, really, actually, I mm. think if he's getting the 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 instrumentals yeah. flown in. I think it's actually the instrumentals that are, you the, know, the cool part of the band. Jason adds to it, but uh, and it's a good composition, and yeah. the guitars are very I think the composition nice. is the yeah. is the key here with this band. Yeah, definitely. I have to listen to more, maybe to the whole album. So yeah, just definitely whole... good. Put on the album and, and let it ride. Type of type of music. Let us know what you guys thought about Eternal Champion, uh, and if you have any other similar bands. Again, like it seems there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the underground, but we don't always get to see or hear about them. So if you have any suggestions in this realm, feel free to drop them into the comment uh, field. But yeah. In the meantime, may your sword stay sharp and your quests end in glory.